This is my co-host Jamie Page. What's up? Uh, once again, we are here with somebody that uh, let me just say, let me let me back up. One of the dopest MCs, dopest lyricists, just a soulful, just this motherfucker with soul, just an incredible, talented brother who I've watched from years. The maturation process from his early days in the Dungeon Family to where he is now. And, um, game changer. Boy, a game changer. <laughs> uh, one half of Narles Barkley, one fourth of the Gully Mob. Yes. <laughs> Mr. CeeLo Green. What's happening, Playboy? Yes, Greens. welcome. Welcome. Thanks for uh, Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming Thank to, you, uh, oh, coming to fuck with us, man. Absolutely. You know Before that. we get into this music, you in this animated world, man, what's, you, you, you winning, you're doing some, some big shit with it in, in the animation. How did that, what, what made you... First of all, I want to get in, get off into the animation, and you know what, what would, you know what what drove you to, because you you win it now with, with the cartoon. What's the what's the um, uh, I was are you are you referencing some of the voiceover work? Yeah, some the, of the Teen Titans. Both Titans, okay. teen titans, titans and the voiceover work. Both. You know what, man? <clears throat> it took me a long time to realize that I had a unique speaking voice. You know what I mean? Like I had been told. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I you know I just kind of really nonchalant about it, but. Uh, you know, once it was recognized by, by that particular um, genre, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they just kind of, you know, was throwing opportunities at me. And, you know, it was just pretty easy. I just kind of go in there and just be myself. So, you know, that was that was pretty easy. Then it became enjoyable because I like the the obscurity of just voiceover. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, a lot of people think that uh, those who have celebrity, they kind of, they are, you know, insistent on it and it's, mm -hmm. it's just got to be like you know but i much rather just be behind the scenes and do other kind of cool stuff too but that's pretty cool you get to go like in your pajamas and yeah you, get, and you don't have to low them checks don't you yeah <laughs> <laughs> quiet and, and money that's that's, quiet. that's yeah. crush money i like that that's what i like quiet yeah. money man. You know, yeah. easy, easy checks to, to do something you love and and, and and then with the team titans we were just sitting in the house the other day and it mm -hmm. came on again so i had never i never watched it but a lot of people wouldn't know that um, many people like myself don't typically watch their own work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I had never seen it. So we sit and watch about as much of it as we could before we were leaving. And um, and you know what? I, we might even been having a conversation. I might have been a little down that day, just kind of feeling some kind of way or whatever. And then when we saw that, it was... And, and it was God's confirmation, man, to cut the TV on, and it was on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was like, look at yourself, man. That's, that's what you've been able to do to be kind of, you know... Uh, reintroduced to a whole other generation and, and and when I watched it I said this is a really special episode this special so I don't really know why they why they picked me you know what I'm saying you mm -hmm. know um, I try to be interesting you know what I'm saying so <laughs> like, you know you're interesting I, I try to be entertaining <laughs> you know what I'm saying but then when I watched it the story was much bigger than myself I was I yeah. was uh I was I was a part of it you know what I'm saying like you know but uh the, the, the theme of the I think it was like a three or four part series mm -hmm. You know, it was uh, made a really special statement, and I said, "Damn, I'm glad I could be a part of that." Yeah. Man, and a couple of kids had kind of, you know, you know, um, and and then they got Zoo when they in the cartoon. So we didn't even know that when I wanted to do when I wanted to do the voiceovers for that. Um, it was maybe like a year, cause you know it takes. Yeah, I was that's gonna a say long for the animation. It's a long process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm it was a year ago, so we kind of long since kind of, you know, I hadn't even thought about it, yeah. you know, until you know it came out. So. But it, anyway, it was a great piece of work, and I'm just I'm really proud to have been a part of it. And yeah. uh, I would do a lot more of them, and as opportunities uh, present themselves. Good deal. And yeah. you just mentioned God. A lot of people don't know, you know, even back in the Goody Mob days, just your spirituality with you infusing that in the music. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know your background and how you came up, you know, and you know, and your singing and just in your lyrics, whether it's Goody Mob or whatever, you, from a spirituality standpoint, is very strong. And what was that background that that that, that brought you? to that point where yes, you know, like I said, you got a strong spirituality base. Well, you know, I mean, I believe that God is your your competence. Because your mama was my pre mother preacher. Father both both yeah, preachers. You grew up in the church. You know. Um, right here in Atlanta, West Side Atlanta, correct? Right, yes. I believe God is just that inner voice, you know what I mean, that, you know, if you decide to listen, you know what I mean? And, um, 
you know, and, and almost, you know, everything. Like, it's all been kind of, you know, initiated by whatever internal dialogue it is, mm-hmm. the, the back and forth. And, you know, I, I consider that to be a conversation with God. And, I, and, and you know, with, with my career, you know, I just wanted to be pleasing in the sight of my maker. Like, that's yeah. why I've done mm-hmm. everything that, that, you know, I have been fortunate enough to accomplish. You know right. what I mean? actually take that leap of faith and land on my feet. It's always been about, you know, well, how was that, how was that father? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, you know. Because that, not because of that first soul food album. Ooh. I mean, you lifted so many spirits, so many people's spirits, including myself. We, it was like, you know, people, I know you heard, you like, man, this little nigga preaching, this nigga preaching. Yeah. But whenever your verse came on, it just, you was such a great order and you jumped on that track so hard, but it was just like, the things you were saying. Bro. I didn't know though. I, I, it was, there was a there was a, 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 a genuine naiveness and a legitimate ignorance yeah. <laughs> like to industry standard and practice. We didn't really know that we were breaking any rules or doing anything so so Incredible. completely wow. different. But you know, let's say a song like "Get Up, Get Out," you know, um, and I mentioned that. I don't I, recall I, yeah, ever graduating at all. And I, I ended that verse by saying, "I know the Lord ain't brought me this far, so you can drop me right. up here." I mean, like, so that was me you know, uh, reaffirming my faith, you know what I mean, like, as I, you know, had just entered in, you know, mm-hmm. through that threshold with that one song, you know what I'm saying, and I'm like, you but know. But that's, that's so dope that you said that, that you didn't even know you were breaking any rules, you were just doing what you know and being yourself, so you know, that's what it's about. Because there's a great saying, you can't straddle the fence without putting your nuts on the line. Right? You know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> so, say that again. You know, I don't say Well, that. I don't think I can say that. Please don't say that. <laughs> So I, I hope that wasn't in poor taste, but I think you get my point. <laughs> no, you know yeah, right? no, no, no. And uh, <laughs> so with that being said, you know what I mean? Like I made a decision, you know, like you have to commit. You have to commit to character. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, you have to commit to craft. And so I, I knew that I was making a life decision. Yeah. And I wasn't going to have that confused. I wasn't going to be double-minded in my in my, in my my ways. I mean, mm-hmm. like I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to attempt to serve two masters. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I know right. that's right. So that verse per se put you on the map. That verse on Outcast. I was get up, talking get up. about the path, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? So right up, it, it happened so quickly right after that. Um, you know, I ended up, you know, at that time, you know, Source Magazine. You was ver- Verse of the Year. Because the, the New York niggas yeah, yeah. said, ver- was it Verse of the Year or Verse, it was verse of the Month? Okay, Verse of the Month. I remember. Because when I tell you, low, the New York niggas hated it. You, <laughs> you called it. <laughs> they was hating it. This country ass nigga. How you yeah. win Verse of the Month? But. You had to give it's it true. That, that verse was hard as fuck, man. Because again, when I when I always uh, mention Dungeon Family, I mention Goody Mob more specifically. But, you know, I, I've stated this time and time again that we felt more like we were civil rights activists mm-hmm. fighting for the equality. You know what I'm saying of Southern hip hop. You know, mm-hmm. we felt like the opinion or the assumption, what have you, was just unevenly yoked. You know, and untrue. And it was. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? It was. so we came <laughs> we came with all the the art and saying like. Um, and the, you know, outrageousness, of course, ultimately, as we More get creativity. to evolve. Because yeah, yeah. y'all had some public enemy can't. type. Y'all, yeah. yeah, y'all had some, you know, because that, that was one of the things people said, oh, they like the Southern P.E. Yeah, which, and put it like this. If Dre and Big were Chuck and Flavor, we were the S1Ws. Hmm. That's, mm. that's a great analogy. So yeah. how, how did, let's let's track back now. How did and that Goody is true, Mo- because they, they, they were the balance. They were like, yeah, they, they were. So how they did, were. No, it's okay. How did Goody Mob come about? Goody Mob came about, um, well, me, Dre, and Big are all the <laughs> same age. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a little bit different. My, my, my living experience is a little bit different. I, I, as they say, I jumped off a portion of the earth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just a tad bit early, low. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm out there running with the big homies, and, and that's kind of, it was reflected in how the way that group was put together. You know, um, so Rico Wade. Shouts out to we had, he was on season yeah. one of, of Shouts the podcast. Shouts out to, to the elder, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, um, he uh, he really gave up, gave us a, a bomb shelter, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you know, in in a war that was going on, and uh, you know that that his his was his, creative his, haven. His selflessness, his generosity, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like his hospitality, it, it saved a lot of lives. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You it really so, did. You know, we were really greatly, deeply appreciative. You know what I'm saying? Uh, of him, so I always acknowledge him with that. Um, so how it came about, um, through different paths, you know what I'm saying, and different people, we all ended up at the same destination. You know, um, uh, shouts out, rest in peace to Big JD, Killer B. These are the homeboys from the neighborhood. They were managing me. They were hustlers out of the neighborhood. They recognized talent in me. You know, we first, we didn't battle. You know what I'm saying, like me and Cujo. It was a homeboy of ours. We all went to school together. 
Mm-hmm. They were upper class with Cujo, Timo, and Gip graduated with my sister and sitting over here. They, grew, they graduated with the class, yeah, the class of 90. Benjamin Mays High School, School of Excellence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the School of Excellence. And they buy so, We class now. You're right. a little younger now. I'm, I'm younger, so I came out in 93. So I was I was at Southwest Middle School right up the street. So you true West Side Atlanta. Absolutely. Dude. absolutely ain't no doubt. <laughs> so with that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you, I would hear about the Lumberjacks in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You know, they were buzzing. And this is around the time with Jack the Rapper and those kind of conventions oh, okay, just yeah. kind of coming around Atlanta. Just my feet wet in the and it was making a lot of noise. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they dressed like a couple of Lumberjacks. And this is when that whole look, the Carhartt look. And oh, yeah. Saying, you feel oh, yeah. Was, was doing all that. <laughs> so that was that. But Glenn Cook was like a, a socialite. You know what I'm saying? Um, Everybody loved him. We called him Cook affectionately. Everybody loved him. Everybody always ended up over his house. So mm-hmm. I'll never forget, you know, um, Killer B was the first one that let me hear the Lumberjack uh, demo. And it was a record called Booyak. Mm-hmm. You remember Booyak? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so this record was going around. It was it was like a hard ass record. You know what I'm saying? Like this one's an East Coast, Southern perspective. I don't know what you call it. It was just different and unique, but it was, it was. It was viable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You feel we could feel this like, okay, this is real, right? And this so, was this was Lumberjacks, T Mo. This was Lumberjacks. And, Cujo Gooding. and let me let me let me let me say Because Gip one big Gip wasn't in that group. Gip was a part of the East Point Chain Gang. You know what I'm saying? Like another group uh featuring Cool Breeze, uh Big Chief, Big mm-hmm. O Z and Cap One. You know what I'm saying? They had just disbanded and Gip was doing some solos and stuff, you know what I mean? So that you know so to answer your question, Goody Mob Soul Food was initially well, essentially, a compilation album. Mm-hmm. If you notice, Dirty South is a solo song with, with yeah, Gibbs. Cool you know I mean? But Cool Breeze, cool Breeze coined the phrase Dirty South. But that was him honoring his OG by having him on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So that's what that was about. Cool John T were in, in litigation with their former <laughs> management, you know, about the namesake and, all, and tied up in some bad contracts. So they couldn't use Booyak, and everybody was excited about this record Booyak. That was supposed to make the album, mm. so they couldn't use it. Um, Cujo came up with Goody Mob. That was that was their trap name. That was their trap crew name, the Pete Funk Goody Mob. Good, that mostly over Booyak. I, I brought that philosophy brought, okay. too. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> originally, shouts out to Big Daddy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, like, it's some real, so that was some street shit. You know what I'm saying? You feel okay. me? Which was, you know, it's... Again, we, I tell you, who's, who's, on, who's on that fence? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people, I tell people, all, I just had this argument uh, recently where I told somebody that the Soul Food album is probably one of the most underrated albums in history, especially to come out of Atlanta. But that album, top to bottom, man, was one of the dopest albums. And it came on the heels of Southern Playlistic. Mm-hmm. But that motherfucker was so hard, man, with the lyrics and production it you know no no knock on southern playlist you know being and drake them oh, my niggas yeah, yeah, no doubt. but that soulful album blow it just it it made southern playlistic made niggas really be proud of the hey soulful really that's when that they people had a different kind of love i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm divorce something soulful and the goody one had a different kind of love mm-hmm. because Everybody knew us from our respective histories. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Y'all had your own you, identity. Yeah, like, we, whether it was East know, Point, whether it was Cujo Goody, and <laughs> whatever. Wichita. You know, for him to keep it real and put his real address on there. Thirteen sixty five Wichita. Wichita. Right? That's what I mean. Yeah. So, I mean, it ought to be a museum at this point. Mm-hmm. It's still over there. That's the man house he grew up in. But I'm, I'm saying that's the that's the naive and that's the realness of us at that time. Like you know what I mean? Um, let me say this. People knew we were real. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You feel me? Like, um, so it was a, you know, but with, with Dre and Big, a lot of the stuff that they were kind of talking about on the first album, they got a lot of hate. Yeah. A lot of people hated it. They called, them, they you know called him. Like, they called him. It wasn't, it was, but it wasn't on them. But people don't know that Puff directed directed Players Ball, Players Ball video. A lot of people don't know that. And he was like, why? You know, and when Rico was on the show, he was like, what? You know, the whole they, play up thing he put on Biggie was was. KP kind of, mentioned that also, like, how how y'all, we we ate Atlanta niggas. How you gonna get Pop to come out there and direct a video Southern playlist? You know, but politics. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You feel me? Like, with, which which <laughs> L.A. Reid is you know something of a master. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know, which ultimately aligned us. You know what I mean? Like with that 
uh, that era, you know what I'm saying, you feel mm -hmm. me, to where we were accounted and we, had, we, we, you know, we were a part, you know what I'm saying, of, of many, many money and little things to come, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, I, and, and we wouldn't even be able to tell the story now if Puffy hadn't did it, so, you know what I mean? True. Like, that's you true. Know, a lot of people didn't know. Only only thing I knew of Puffy at the time was I just recognized him from doing a Carl Knight ad. That's the only thing I knew wow. of Puff Daddy. Wow. You know, and Junior A and R at Uptown Records. That's all. That's all it said. Yeah. If you go back and look at it, remember I was at the at the grocery store every month to get a new Source magazine, just checking out. So like a rap page. Was yeah, rap page. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, I'm saying the 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 naive. When, I, when I'm saying we don't really know we were doing anything, mm -hmm. so to speak. Let's say get that's an incredible album. That record was that's eight incredible. minutes long. It was. Eight minutes long. But when they Seven did the video version, it, it was cut down. Of course, it was the outcast record. Yeah. They had to do two versions with Big and Dre. But the original version, I listen to it all the time. It's eight, over eight minutes long. It's true. You you know know what what I'm that was Incredible. never going to get played on nobody radio station. But we didn't realize that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or let's say, like, you know, fight for the spirit of mind to break the beat and just talk. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? I didn't. I didn't think. I just literally, I like matter. I couldn't write no verse to it. You know what I mean? And the guy who produced that, his name is Mitso. Mitso, I know Mitso. Yeah. yeah. So he produced. Actually, outside of organized noise, he's the only one that that produced the song on. Yeah, that, that's how much we respected him. Horrible music. That was yep. the name of his production it was, company. It was. You know what I'm saying? He produced Booyak. So that's how that. So that's how that record made. Speaking of that album, and I listen to a song when I listen to that album that all the time. My mama, destination unknown. What space were you in when you did that song? Cause you you had just lost your mama. Well, my mom, she was um, she was paralyzed in an accident. She was in a car accident. She was uh, quadriplegic for three years before she passed due to complications. Mm -hmm. So, my sister, bless her heart, you know what I'm saying? You know, she went to nursing school and got licensed. You know. Um, as a nurse, we took care of my mother at home. And Didi, how does the story go? You said she asked her. Shout out to Shadonna. She here in the studio with us. She asked her. She asked to hear the album one day. She asked to hear it completely. But she was, you know, a minister. She was against laws saying secular music. She was against. She was against you singing. But when I tell you that that song to this day, secular as she thought. Yeah. She she got a chance to see a lot of her rearing show. You know, show up. You know, her fruit. You know what I'm saying? To this day, when I listen to that song, it's still, you know. I, I got a chance before she passed, when she passed, the album came out, I want to say two weeks later, so I got, it, and the face was in Atlanta, so I could literally drive there and, and change the credits on it, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Uh, we used to do video editing in a, in a room next door to Linux, some little, some little room, some little, I don't know what it is, yeah. I even wanted to do some overdubs for the Soul Train Awards in that same little spot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of folks don't realize this, and, and I was... We was talking about just a minute ago, the old Jack the Rapper days and, you know, just the convention days. And Wait a minute, I'm sorry. I need to complete my thought. I, I, so I was able to dedicate something okay, yeah. to my mom. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know, mm -hmm. before it went to press. Um, Goody Mob and the Wu-Tang. It was some beef at one point. Came to blows here in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Look, come on, man. You know, Lo, I've been in the game, but okay, it, it was some, it was some, it was some Goody Mob, Wu Tang beef. Was it specifically Raekwon and you? No, nah, me and Ray was cool. Okay. As a matter of fact, everybody likened us. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like you know, if Gip looked like Rizzo, I definitely look, look, look like Ray. Raekwon. Raekwon. You know what yeah. Saying? You feel me? So it was that kind of thing. Um. It came to a head here in the A. I was around. Yeah. I was around. But it wasn't no big deal. It was just, I, I want to just say it was a misunderstanding. And it's just too many men. You know what I'm saying? You feel <laughs> too much like, like, the wrong. Real, real. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but, you know, we, we eventually went on to squash all of that shit completely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Raekwon then, you know, ended up on skewing on the Barbie. Yeah, you know exactly. You feel me? I just did Raekwon's last record with him. We did a song called Marvin, dedicated to Marvin Gaye. Okay. Oh, nice. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, you know, what other? Marvin Gaye's birthday. Is it? Damn. Yeah, sure is. Oh, wow. Marvin Gaye's birthday. 84. Happy birthday, Coach Marvin. Love yeah, it. So that, that, that whole situation After was squashed. After the dance is one of my favorite albums. So that, that beef oh, that was squashed, but a lot of people don't know that it was a Goody Mob, uh, Wu-Tang disagreement. And yeah. What did, what did it, what, what started this shit? Even though it's, it's I was it's, even going at them at the beginning of uh, the, 
the the experience. Yeah. When I say I was, uh, that's what I was about to yeah, bring up. Uh, <laughs> I thought you said you was a god. Sound like another nigga to me. <laughs> you know you feel now, like? I was just about to bring that up. <laughs> so you went directly at them. And I went at them. So yeah, I went at them again on uh, on Cummins album too. Uh, the song called uh, God again. What about Fly Away? Away? If you don't like where I stay, Fly Away. Now that, now that was Fly that. Away. We did that record after the the organized noise bad boy basketball game at Rico at the at the dungeon. And it was it was some tension out there. Yeah, yeah, back back in the day at the White House, there used to be a game. <laughs> Puff Daddy, Bad Boy, and Dungeon Family, Rico Wade, and the whole crew. But it it it, it turned on. Um, it went it went on wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it got dirty. Oh, it got very dirty. Because they they. they you know, I don't, it, I don't it got say, dirty. You want to talk about it? I mean, he, he, he brought some athletes, man. He brought some fucking Negro league type <laughs> niggas in there, man. I was like, damn. <laughs> like, he wasn't ready. You know, we just didn't play for fun and all of that. But the thing of it is, though, you know, we at Rico House, so yeah. like, you know, that's home for all of us. So like, you know, we was already on edge. I like heard, these, I heard that line niggas want to have this they shit. They want not. We ain't never having it for you. You know what's so never. dope about? But, but now, hold on, let me cut y'all. Back to you jumping off the porch, man. To see you now, the maturation, man, is cool and calm. Well, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't see the, the right off the porch, see <laughs> the, the one hit a quitter, see to knock a nigga out. And the, you know, people, you know, I know they don't know. Maybe they don't, they, they don't, this shit, they, don't man. they don't realize, you know, back in the day, you, you didn't jump off. The, I saw you jump off the stage in Clark when you knock a nigga out. Come, I said, God, no, my nigga. You was there? Yeah, I was there. <laughs> Now, do you want to know something? He threw the water bottle. He threw the water bottle. I'm telling you how this story happened. And it's a it's a deeper that 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 night is much more significant. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm just you know kicking it with the audience. I'm throwing the water. Yeah. It was cold out there. It was Ooh, cold it was and muddy. You it was know homecoming from Clark Atlanta or Morris Brown. It was, it it was, was all water. I, throw, I don't know what I'm just thinking. Just kind of whatever. Just trying to amuse with the crowd. It was a plastic bottle. I turned my back. Dude threw it back up there. Ooh. I turned back around, bow, bust him more in the mouth. Now that's plastic, so it really wasn't no big deal. But it was just the principle. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you feel me? Like and back then, God Ooh, I'm, I'm so glad that God has given me discernment, has <laughs> given me page, patience. A lot, bro. a lot. He just blessed me. That's been a prayer of mine over the years, cause like, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? So I end up I end up uh, jumping and I'm talking about this stage might have been high oh, as it was. And this swan nigga and, you jump, and you jumped in the crowd. And swan whipped wow. this nigga's ass. So he he say jumping off the porch. Like I said, I've seen that CeeLo the Wild CeeLo. Wow. I've seen Super Wild. And you were there. Yes, but, I was there. But I'm going to tell you. So how, how long ago was this? Ooh, 90. This was 95. 95, 95 90, yeah, before the Olympics. So y'all, so, so I went, when I lived have, there. Have y'all ever worked together? Or, because you, you've been running in the same circle, it seems like. So... Uh, I'm, I'm sure many indirect, yeah, you know, in urban kind of ways. Yeah, been, that's just a whole to be yeah, homeless. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we just in, know that we've been in each other's presence for years, mm -hmm. and, you know. And but my mother passed that night. That's what's so. That's why I never forget it. I yeah. left there and I end up. I end up fracturing my shoulder because I they moved. They parted like the rest. I landed on the ground. Boom, mm -hmm. slid on my chest. So I landed on my palms and like oh, this. Damn. Wow. So you knocked this nigga out with a broken collarbone? Yeah, we got to, we had to strain it. You know like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in pain. Oh, and wow. I got home, and, and, and I'm telling y'all this something deeply personal, man. But, but, but yep, it's, my mother passed that night, man. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, let's fast forward a little bit to Goody Mob after the second album. After that, it was... Brand Sharp. It was CeeLo, I'm going. The solo CeeLo. Yeah, and we, I remember. Oh, I remember um, the album cover where it was the album was One Monkey Don't Stop No Show and actually had a monkey on the, the Goody My album. <laughs> How did that, bro? I mean, you you being a nigga that y'all know you are, them, them was your homeboys, bro. They, I mean, that's your family. Yeah. To see that, to see an album cover with three members of the Goody Mob and a monkey sitting there in the theater seat, what did, how did that make you feel? Well, we all talked about it, to be totally honest. Before they did. I just knew that it was being done. You know, um, and I was like, y'all sure y'all want to go that far with it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel me? It's like, you know, we were, like I said, like, you know, like, we brothers and had been for a long time. So, like, you know, we were pretty civil, but just as men and just, you know, um, different personalities and egos, it clashes. And, it, and it's, it's different conflicts of interest. Like, we, 
you know, we went from being kids together, you know, to having having kids of our own and mm -hmm. becoming fathers and husbands and providers and things of that nature. And uh, so again, I, you know, some of our priorities were different. I mean, some of our, our you know, imperative that we don't have the same urgencies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Things of that nature. So I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to give it a, a, a poetic justice. But you know, to answer your question, how it made me feel. I, honestly, bro, it was laughable to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just being totally you honest. Um. Well, they weren't feeling feeling the fact that you you I, branched off. I get pissed off by little shit. To me, that was that was that was big. You know what I'm You feel me? So like, you know, it's kind of more just something that you just kind of, kind of. I'm just in awe of it. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Everything, really you know. But then after talking, you know what I'm saying? You know, I understood where they were coming from. Now, of course, it was relative to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and the the, mon the, the monkey wasn't meant to be a representation of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, the monkey was meant to be a representation of the monkey wrench. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you why. Not only was it my leaving the group that was a monkey wrench, it was Cujo's accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it was also them, you know, getting dropped from the label. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that was voluntarily. Like, you know, that was just a decision because, you know, when I struck out on the solo on tip, you know, nobody really knew how that was going to work. But I, I sung free, the intro of Soulful. I always mm -hmm. wanted to sing. That's the first thing I wanted to do. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, uh, so when I got my opportunity, I took it. I definitely took it, you know. Um, and with that being was said... It more, you leaving Goody Ma, was it more a financial thing, creative thing, or a combination of both? Because everybody know you're in a group of four people that's splitting the, the pie four way. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, was definitely, it was definitely about me having some foresight, you know what I mean? But then again, I just felt like I wasn't whole, you know, creatively, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know... Um, there's, there's a such thing as compromise, but there's also a, a greater degree, uh, you know, and that's appeasement, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, now I'll compromise for the sake of the camaraderie, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, um, you know, the, the group aspect, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not to be appeased in a grown man, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? But what was that conversation like? Like, I mean, you had to tell them that, you know? We had, we, I mean, like, let's say, the conversation, I remember we were on the tour bus, and, uh, like, Timo asked me what I wanted to do, and I said, man, well, you know, I, we it's it's publicized and documented that you know we we agree or we disagree creatively on the direction for world party. You yeah. know what I'm saying like you know yeah. didn't like the record. I was, I, disapp it, I was disappointed. So that. was I. I'm I was like, people not gonna like it. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Um, I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, but hey, you know, I had been in I had been in that driver's seat. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have to kind of share those risks. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Split mm -hmm. the risk. You know, if you're gonna split the reward, and that's what it was about. So I humbled myself and I'm like, let's try it. You know what I mean? Like you know. Um, Dallas Austin came on and said, gave us the TLC look, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, so we were dealing with some big, you know, commercial potential uh, opportunities. I mean, like, we had to kind of, you know, consider that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, but needless to say, it ended up being like, the, the best selling album that we ever did, but it just, you know. Um, what party was? Mm -hmm. I know it's certified gold, but it didn't go platinum, but it's certified gold. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, well, it did a little over gold. So, like, it's midway between gold and, and platinum. Yeah, so, about yeah, six, seven hundred. Yeah, exactly, something like that. And, so, this was, and, and then how, how soon after that did did the whole you and Danger Mouse come together for well, the whole Norris Bark? Well, we talked, we, um, so we, we had that conversation, we talked about it, it was it was verbalized, it was amicable, oh, so you know what I'm saying, like, you know, and, you know, they wanted to do, because everybody wanted to do other different things, too, you had to understand, a lot of it was biased on, you know, people had to pick, people pick their favorites, like, you know, like, you know, um, I didn't have a favorite, like, you know, other in, my, in Wu Tang until after Cuban Links. I'm like, okay, Raekwon is my favorite. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But then, you know, who else would have known that Ghostface would have ended up being the most consistent one? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. You feel me? He became my favorite. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So with that, you know, or let's say when Thuggy Ruggish Bone came out, who was everybody's favorite? Busy. 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 You know yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? We love Busy, right? Yeah. So it be like that in groups. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I love the way they kept it together. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, you know, like, you know, they, they, they it really just, selected It wasn't just no animosity with you and Gip and Cujo and Timo, like in those years. It, or, if it was, it was, it was the natural amount. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you can't, you can't expect to have no barbecue, man, and not like, no flies and that. They, they, they yeah. coming, man. It wasn't coming. It, it, like, it wasn't turning into I mean, a shit. But especially like know. after, I mean, seeing what happened with Crazy and then you came out with Fuck You. I mean, like all of those, like you were... 
Well, that's the thing. Out of here. That's the thing. When we talked about it and I understood it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? Like, we knew what the perception would be, but at that time, that's when they that's when they was having the beef DVDs and shit mm -hmm. like that, and that was a commodity. That was a marketing scheme around that yeah. time. 50 Cent had popularized it around that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, amongst them three, they felt like it was something that they could might maybe garner the attention. Them so like mm -hmm. they wanted to go independent. They got to deal with Koch Records, Goody Money that. Records, yep. all of that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you just got to shoot your shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel me? If it doesn't work, then it's like, hey, man, you know, regret is a motherfucker, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, but with that, you know what I'm saying? Like we got past it, you know, like obviously, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. We've been on tour. We put a, you know, a TV show. You know what I'm saying? That's um, wrong, man. We do the yeah. bad, that's, that's, that's I, wrong I said, man. Shit. I said to myself, I'm like, I don't <laughs> want our our discography to read that to be the last way it stopped. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, if for no other reason I'm going to do another album, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it doesn't end there. You know what I mean? Like, and then it's just a power of forgiveness. I remember I had a homeboy tell me, he said, God damn, man, you going to go back after that? He said, man, you deserve the Nobel Peace Prize, man. You know what I'm saying? You <laughs> but in him not knowing that it was never really uncivil. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, in the kind of way, like, want to turn into I, the street I, shit. I mean, nah, at all, man. Like, that's, that's I, I'm banged in for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love them. I love them all. And I'm so like, we brothers, man. We go through different shit, man. Like, you know, and then Joe getting hurt, man. That brought us all back together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel me? When he had the car wreck, he had his leg. Yeah, day. you know what I'm saying? So we, we moved on since but then. But circle back around to what I was saying about the Which whole, makes it even greater testimony, if you ask me. You sure you read about yeah. that on uh, the Norris Barkley situation. When uh, this was at toward the end of the Goody Mob days, when Danger, when you and Danger Mouse, how did that, how did that come about? I know you touched on it, then you went back to the Goody Mob. Okay, um, Norris Barkley. Cause that was Nor when 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 the Nor Norris Barkley was. That was what what year was that coming off the end of Goody Mob? Okay, okay. So it was it was a, it was it was a, it was, a, it was a gap there. Yeah, um, I was kind of <laughs> um, displaced. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like for a few years, uh, creatively I, displaced or physically displaced? Creatively, because I didn't have a home. I didn't have a labor home. You know what I mean? Like. You know, L.A. Reid had left uh, Ariston and Ariston closed down. Mm -hmm. um, then my, my deal had went over to Jive Records, mm -hmm. and they asked me, you know, did I want to continue on with them? But, you know, and this was at the time when Soul Machine was out. You know what I'm saying? My second solo record. And uh, You The One Girl, was it was hot, man. Like, I was going to Memphis and, you know, just places like that every weekend rocking that record, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, we was going to shoot a video for it and everything, that, that was going to, that, that, that could have really been a big single, mm -hmm. it should have been, um, but when the paperwork got, it got all, it got all, you know, lost in transit, um, they asked me, did I want to continue with the record, you know, on, on, and which single and, was this? This was You The One, with T.I., produced by Jazzy Faye. Okay, because what was the other record that had the video with the flashing lights? Oh, that's that's Nas Barkley. You talking about no, 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 no. This was your solo project. It was. Uh, oh, you talking about Closet Freak? Yeah, Closet Freak. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Closet <laughs> Freak. That was so the, that was the first single off of, off of um, Perfect Imperfection. So that was the that was the breakout. Yeah. So because when that came out, and I'm being honest, I was one of them. I was like, what the fuck? Was this? I mean, it was totally it was so totally different from what I was used to hearing. Yeah, uh, for the good. <laughs> so you know, but I, I mean, I, of course, you know, soul wise singing on all those albums. Can I tell you this though? Yeah. George Clinton had set us all down and was like, man, I christen y'all the young Parliament Funk of You know what I'm saying? We just talked about this before. Oh my God. <laughs> because we when I saw that video, before I said, you got here. I said, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. It's off the chain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you was in a new space crate. You felt like, okay, I can spread my wings. Now, this is some other shit I want to do. I could have did that first. I could have did that in 94. That's how I feel about the game. It's all about funk and, yeah. and fun. And, and the, I like live music instrumentation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I rap because I could. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But, like, the way I feel is, is that, that that really vibrant and colorful you know, big, large production, earth, wind, and fire. Yeah, yeah. and you, you could know, tell. You could tell because you could like. tell through your yeah, production, your music. You like, know what I'm saying? It was like you were yourself, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Now, we, in the early days in the Dungeon Family, we, we heard you singing, bro. But Andre 3000, he wasn't singing back then. No, he wasn't. He was. <laughs> <laughs> Did Dre, you think, you, you had some influence on Dre, but Dre was like, shit, I know, low, low singing like that, shit, I'm, I'm going to sing, too. I can sing. I would say so. I would say so. But you know what, man? We inspired each other in many different ways. Not, not just me and him, but all of us, man. Because, like, mm -hmm. you know, so much when, talent when I say the Goody Mob was, was essentially um, a, a compilation album, Southern Philistic, um 
Cadillac music was the whole oh, Dungeon Sound. Like we music. all big groove, everybody. We all live cool together, man. Yeah. We all live together, man. We were and you can tell cars. when you listen yeah. to the music of the camaraderie and the tightness, the closeness. You can hear it, man. It comes off in the music. And I mean, those we name it classic album. But you, true. So Dre wasn't singing back then. Dre heard you low and said, you know what? <laughs> I'm but, but no, no, it's true. It's true. I mean, he know that he, but like you know, but Dre eventually became a fucking genius, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing that's nothing from genius, him. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, yeah. and it's fat. You know what I mean? Like, but I go all the way back to the third grade. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've known what, Dre the longest. Oh, I know uh, just us knowing each other. Okay. So we brothers, and you know, Dre. Dre's a Gemini like me, so we share a lot of the, those same characteristics. Yeah. Ah, so that's, for that, so that, that's for that. No, no, which that, one y'all that, that comes, yeah, <laughs> right? No, 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 which that's one y'all want to say was Gemini, and I'm so, like, oh, there it goes. So his, his, his and Lauren Hill's birthday is on May 27th, and I'm on May 30th. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So me, me and Dre go all the way back to elementary school. We were play cousins in school. So do you think, and this this just this just legendary Jerry asking, that just off. Can we get a... Andre 3000 CeeLo album. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I don't, I don't want the homie to be missing. Cause Dre, Dre, Dre's really quiet. He's really discreet. You know what I'm saying like, if me, I could be a little talkative. A little bit. You think so? <laughs> 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 but, I mean, that, that would be. I mean, come on, man. We Creatively, talk, we talked about it. Yeah. Okay. You hear me? Okay. So we've talked about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Um, talking, man. Let's, let's move on this shit. Right. Let's you make that happen. I would have said. You do. You want to do it? Fuck yeah, I do it. <laughs> I definitely do so it. Let him so let it matter. That's what? all. That's that's the only thing we ain't did. You know what I'm saying? Like, and there's two things. As I, Cause I'm a fan of Dre. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a fan of Dre. I'm a fan of B. I'm a fan of Outkast. I'm a fan of us. I love us. I love Goody. I love the Dungeon. I love Backbone. Love Cool Breeze. Love Big Rule. Love Organized Noise. Yeah. Love all my dudes. You know what I'm saying? You feel yeah. me? I would love to see us together, man, being, you know, competitive and thriving. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, anything come out of Atlanta, we're supposed to be taxing it. You know what I'm saying? Damn like, you right. feel me? Like, to me, you know what I'm saying? Y'all proud to be from the A. You no know what disrespect what I'm to no other artists. But when the Dungeon family, when y'all came out with socks and flip-flops and wearing A-hat, niggas weren't doing that shit before. Niggas was claiming Half New York. That's the stuff that they were niggas, doing. Niggas was claiming New York. Yeah. Y'all came, when y'all came, y'all That's what cool. I was saying earlier. Like, I didn't, I didn't know we had an accent. Shit, I wanted to be from New York. <laughs> but, say, but then even coming off of that, and then <laughs> hey, let's, yeah. let's, let's go back into, you know, with Crazy, because then right. you changed the game again. You know, with, with your the flashiness and, I mean, Crazy is like people still... Listen to it now. You hear it all over still. Can you I know, tell you how it is? overseas. What? I mean, as of this year, it was the ten year, um, I guess, statute of limitation of where, in the Rolling Stone magazine when they do their year reviews, yeah, yeah. Crazy was rated the song of the decade. So, wow. you know what I'm saying? That's Congrats, a, that's, man, a that's big, big shit. That's awesome. So it's been that's ten huge, years. Bro. We we just we just. Started on another uh, Niles Barkley album. Oh, good. Okay. So I'm doing that again. But to, to, to answer your question, it's like it's been that long. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't really, like I said, I mean, even even um, going back to the beginning when we were just recording the two inch tape. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, a lot, of thing, a lot of things were done in one take. You know what I mean? Just how they were in the 60s. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, you would have nailed it because you only got this one time to do it. So we were like that, and we were working feverishly, you know what I mm -hmm. mean, around those times. And it was just a lot of harder work, you know what I mean? Got to rewind all the way back to the top of the tape. That it was crazy. Was, that you know what I'm saying? So you can listen to the whole the song so again. Heavy. Exactly. The things were so heavy. Yeah. Wow. The Logic of, Family Masters is flooded. A lot of stuff, lot of stuff is gone. Oh, oh I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So with that, you know what I'm saying, um, again, it was just really unassuming, you know what I'm saying, nonchalantness to it. The Angel Monster wasn't, he wasn't really nobody, you know what I'm saying, you feel yeah. me? You know, I was, um, I had done two albums that were critically acclaimed, but not necessarily commercially successful, you know what I'm saying? So, no, and that's what the first label album, get. yeah, there was, because, and I gave them a hard way to go. I look, I look at labels like Couriers, they like either U.S. Postal, you know, UPS or FedEx, FedEx. FedEx. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. you could get them some, you know, and they all got their own routing system, yeah. you know what I'm saying, you feel me? That's why pop labels prerogative is pop music, mm -hmm. period, you know what I'm saying, you feel me? If you can give them a package they can be light on their feet with, you know what I'm saying? Like they can get it there. So you know great analogy like, though. You know what I'm saying? Great so analogy. but me dealing with me is heavy. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know what I'm saying? They're like, shit. What I mean, where do we put this in the record store? It's, it's jazz, spoken word. 
So, I, but we only had those, the game. That's, that's what. what yeah, yeah. We, we only had those one album slots around that time. So I figured yeah. I need to try to infuse and be everything I am mm -hmm. in one album, and that was pretty. That was perplexing because the mind of the average consumer does not deviate that often throughout the course of an album. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I didn't realize I was breaking any rules. I thought everybody knew me. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you but know I mean, crazy, you know like, like, I mean, it's me. My, my, my white Jewish mother <laughs> yeah. loves crazy. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> you said that was, they, they, Rolling Stone made that, it was record of the decade? Yep, song That's of the big. decade. Yeah. Song of the decade, okay. Yeah, and then Fuck You came next, right? A couple years after that. Uh -oh. Yep, I went around the world. With, we we only did the. Okay. Did you perform that at with the President Obama? Yeah. Can I yeah, call flag for that shit, nigga. Go ahead. Yeah, tell me. You call flag for that shit. Why? Why are you trying to throw me up on the bus? Do you know the goddamn song? <laughs> you know the name. Why buddy? you didn't invite me? Why you didn't invite me to perform? He, he wasn't tripping. They were just trying trying to come, come at him. Yeah. President Obama was cool. He wasn't even there. Oh, we were okay. at We were at Tyler Perry. Let me tell y'all something. I'm from Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. That Delta property had been vacant over there in that bend all my life. Yeah. I used to stay in Village D International, right across the street from Green Mountain. Been here, been real. Yeah. Been here, been real. I stayed in, I stayed in uh, Kings Ridge. Uh, what, what was what was on Children's? Not Landry Mall. That's the other one. What was that? Landry Mall. Well, y'all, hey, what? Can't it's nobody claim the A. You real look, like A Town. Now. True. And look. So, but you you you, you did with, the dirty version. Then come on now, Lord. This is what it was. Now he had it was levels to it. He had the general <laughs> admission where it was like you know five hundred to a thousand dollar donation. So you the thought plate. that okay, I'm we in was the, in the big room. We was able to do the fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollar plate. But you said shit, I can cuss and do whatever. But if you look at the clip, I asked. Him, I said, can I do his version? I said, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Because I didn't know there was no cameras in there and nothing like that. But I, I'm laughing the whole time just fucking with people. I'm like, y'all know the song. Y'all ain't tripping. And, and, the right. media, and the media tried to damn villainize. They did. I said, damn. They tried to chew you up. Who, who, uh, who out the A you fucking with right now? What, what, period, across the board, what music? You ain't one of them niggas like, man, fuck these young niggas. This shit, wow. Yeah. What, who, who coming out the A or, or across the board? What, what music you fucking with right now? You know what? I feel like... I feel like it's. I feel like Rollo got got he one record away. Cause mm -hmm. I just like him. He got a, his flow. I like his flow. I like Rollo. And his wordplay is real slick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like and uh, I like I like his aesthetic. I like you know like his I like his uniform uniformity. You know to his crew. You know what I mean yeah. like you know like you know he he got some real ball shit going on and I can recognize that and I can salute that. You know what I'm saying so but. You know, this is rap music, so like, you know, I'm just really looking for him to come with that, that, that one real record that just mm -hmm. translate, you know what I'm saying, like, and, and, and open it up for him. You know, who else I like? I'm going to throw out three names. I'm going to let you come, but I'm going to throw out three names when you finish. I want you to just, just quick, quick shot on each one. Yeah. Migos. They're my youngest. I love them. They keep, and you know what? You know, it, it's trap music, but they ain't trapping it. You know what you feel me? That's, what I, that's one of my little sayings. I love trap music, but I don't trap music. You know what I'm saying? Wait, say we, that again. Wait, I yeah. love trap music, but I don't yeah. trap music. You know what I'm saying? We let it be. We set it free. Okay. Okay. I'm so oh, I, I oh, damn had to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought I'm like, wait, oh, what? what? You feel me? We got to realize. We got to realize the irony in the words that we use on an every on an average day. You know what I'm saying? Even mm -hmm. think think about the think about the literal context of, do you understand me? Don't that sound like some a slave would say to you? Do you understand me? Mm. Understand. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um. Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars is like a brother to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, really? Yeah, I met Bruno um, young. I was introduced to him early. Uh, they always used to be introduced as Phil and Bruno. They were staff writers uh, before they got their deal. And um, a lot of his first material was written for me. They kind of put him with me. Oh. That's how we that's how You know, we I can up. see that, though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Makes um, sense. Mm -hmm. They kind of put him with me. And... Um, I, I, I mentored Bruno, you know what I'm saying? So I can, I can uh, definitely see that. And uh, you know, but of course he was already supremely talented, you know what I'm saying? Like he just he just hadn't got his first record, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, um you know, then he did the, the billionaire record, millionaire with Travis McCoy, that mm -hmm. came, then B O B that was a hit, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, then C D something else. Um he wrote, you know, just the way you are, he wrote that for me, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't I didn't So I you didn't, mentored him yeah. over the years. And have you yeah. wrote anything on his on on this on this recent project you put out? 
No, I mean, he, he, he out of space now. He gone. Boy, that dude, <laughs> hell, he no help. That dude is incredible. He don't need no help, man. He doing his thing, man. So salute to uh, young Bruno, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21 Savage. <clears throat> I love bank account. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? Like, yeah. you know, I love bank account. Who, who, who I love around? I love, yeah, I was gonna say you. I love the Migos though, cause they they keep in Do they give you? Me. Do they give you a, a? Even with the new video, do they remind? Do they remind you of y'all Migos. self? Of the of, of not just the Goody Mob, yeah, but the Dungeon. Do they? They do. Not they, musically. Not musically. Not musically. But just they whole movement. They're vibing there. But they showing a lot of personality. You know they got a hell of personality. Like, and you know, like you know, whether it's Huncho or Offset, I mean, like you know, a lot of because you know, Takeoff, you know, man, he quiet, but that's who I love. Shout out, he really be snapping at him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I fuck with Take, I fuck with all. They like they my youngest. We talk all the time. Oh, good. Yeah. So you ain't one of them cats that just like man, nah, man. Y'all nah, nah, I could never do that. That's just still Atlanta. They're my children, man. You know what I mean, like, but that's what it's about. I mean, they they, they to... making they pushing our art form forward. You know, at an accelerator rate, man. Like it is supremely successful. It's the, so, so they, the so, whole so streaming they, complex was built off of urban music. It's right. Sure. You feel me? So they call sure you for advice and stuff. Again. <laughs> And not maybe they advice, they but have, you know, you're an OG now. So right. Yeah. Right. That, that's that's the whatever they need. I just make myself available. But like, you know what I mean? Like that they're, they're showing improvement with action. You know what I'm right. You feel me? So. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, you know, they good. I mean, I, I just tell them to keep, I can show you, you know what I'm saying? I just yeah. say, go. I, was, I, was, I said, this new walk, like I talked about, I said, for them to throw it back that far to acknowledge the past and they kind of wait for their generation, yeah. it was just like such a nod of, of uh, uh, an acknowledgement. And you, you, you know seem, what I'm saying? very motivational. And, and, and it would, and yeah, it would remind me of the Closet Free video that for them doing yeah. it. You kind of see what I'm saying? So I can appreciate them it's, being, it's different having it's, a sense of cutting edge, yeah. yeah it's, it's very you know, cutting edge. A lot of things I did that people ended up taking seriously, I did stemming from my sense of humor. I think it's just funny. Yeah. You know I can saying? see that, though. You know, yeah. I'm thinking people gonna laugh with me, like even with the gold man or something like that. When I did that. <laughs> what was the what, but, the what? Yeah, go ahead, Jay. I was, I was about to ask uh, about the uh, the whole mask. What were you? Well, uh, well say uh, that first. Darlene uh, Davidson. Uh, <laughs> Davidson. You know what? Darlene Davidson. Okay. Not the day That's what I mean. Right. If folks didn't know you had a sense of humor, I was like, man, they taking this shit too serious. I'm like, damn, the nigga, it's, it's just for fun. Yeah, yeah but I'm like, I'm getting so hot in the dog. I mean, like, <laughs> put it like this: the people that love me. They not sitting there expecting me to play it safe. They actually on the edge they see waiting for me to survive another stunt. You know what I'm right. saying? So like I feel like I'm a daredevil for me. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it to death. And that's the type of commitment I'm gonna crack. You know what I'm saying? Because any of those times I could have did something, I could have I could have died trying. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know, but I done took off and started flying a whole bunch of times and uh and people believe in me. I, I and it's something of an expectation. I feel like I want to live up to that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, but I don't take it as pressure. I put it, I take it as perspective. Mm -hmm. you right. Know what I'm saying? And, they, like, and, they, and they believed in you so much, too. You, um, They put you on The Voice. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. What was that like, being on The Voice? How did and that, then, yeah, how did that come about? Who, who like, I mean, for them to, um, to recognize your eye and ear for talent, was well, it? Well, the technical terms, it came about by affirmative action. <laughs> 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 they needed a nigga on this, so they needed some trouble. <laughs> That's what it was when Mr. T on the edge. <laughs> they had to pull one nigga in there. Shit. Hey, who the hell gonna drive the man? So that's it. <laughs> they had to have a BA. You was the BA Barackers of the boy. Oh, God. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, you so, yeah, be yeah, angry rackers of the boy. Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and I say I say that jokingly, but there's some truth to that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You feel me? But come but, on, low. They could have went and got uh, some, some other niggas. Had they, but, they at the time, though, but at the time, though, it was... At the time, wasn't nobody bigger than me. Yeah. And I didn't realize no. that. I yeah. don't even think that I appreciated the opportunity as much as I should have. Yeah, because that, that was a good I wanted big, to all of that, that really big push. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to all of it nonchalant. So why did why did that why did that end? How did that tail spin off? Well, um... We had a con we did a press conference, and what they wanted to do as a concept, basically what they're doing now, kind of playing musical chairs yeah. to kind of keep the format fresh, different right. perspectives. People bring their, you know, yeah. and bring in different different audiences, whoever somebody's favorite may be, you know. And I honestly think, I, you know, I, to be totally honest, y'all, I haven't looked at it since I left it. I mean, yeah. like, I didn't look at it when I was on it because I don't really look at my, I don't look at myself on TV. You know what would mean? you do another show like that, or I would love to go do the voice again. You know okay. like, and, and we've talked about it. Oh, really? Get, getting the original cast back together, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I just think, you know, that would be 
to everybody's best interest. I'm saying you feel yeah. me? It would work. It's like a great chemistry. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and yeah, that, right. that's what it is about a chemistry. But nobody knew um, mm -hmm. what it would be. You know what I'm saying what was attractive to me about the show was the the spinning chair, the blind audition. Yeah. I said, okay, this is a show that's got its got characters, got its priorities in order. And I mean, you know, because like. With me, like, if, if you got to even base it off a look or something being, you know, like, ideal, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm nobody's grave and image for what I was able to do. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, you know, like, I wouldn't judge people like that. I ain't really judgmental like that. Like, it, you know, it's kind of a, a come-as-you-are type of artist. You, you know don't want to run your label. I mean, with the eye and ear, you guys, you know, you don't want to... You don't you don't want to run a label you know you, you you're not I, out looking for art like well this. I do have an imprint situation it's called Mothership and it's, and it's at Sony okay. but like you know right now it's small it's a small subsidiary and I only have signing power for singles you know so like and I have put out a um, I did a, I did a song like with my my, uh, my my sons had a group called Swagoo mm -hmm. and then we put a record out you know what I mean um, called iPhone song but Apple didn't allow us to use the the master usage of that that ringtone hmm. uh, boom boom dun, dun, mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. and I'm telling you man this record almost caught on when we got held up in litigations the the the, 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 the took the, all of the oh, that should have yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. the whole situation you know they even got they they even got upstream from my situation to Epic Records L A Reed my Godfather picked yeah. them up and signed my son's group you know what I'm saying wow. but then shortly after that you know he didn't he left gone. Epic yeah. Records I'm saying yeah. so. That have you talked to LA lately since everything? I mean, what what's your relationship now? Like you I and talk, LA Reed? I talk to him all the time. Okay. Christmas, Father's Day, everything. everything. That's my godfather. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, and shouts out to him with, with the new Hitco situation. I knew about that as it was coming about. Yeah. You know, shouts out to Big, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, him and Big stay in business. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I, I was, I, it, it put a smile on my face to see that he went back. And that just shows the closeness of all y'all. Super close. And the first thing that he brought through his new situation was Big Boy. Super close. You know what I'm saying? Um, and hey, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a free agent again, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel me? Like, so don't be surprised, you know, like if, if I possibly do something. I'm putting that out there as a free agent. We're here for it. We're here for it. We're here for it. Can you still get in the game and score 30 points and get 10 rebounds? <laughs> I can do it. You should. I can do it. Come on now. Is that a test? Can you get in? I mean, because I. I'm a side I want to be tested. Uh, I want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've done so exceptionally without nobody fuck with us. Yeah. yeah. Am I right? Cut know what I'm talking about, yeah. man. We've been so supreme. It's like, for years. Oh, so what, 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 what's, what's some advice that you would give to some upcoming artists now, especially like in the world we're in now with streaming and, you know, there's really no pressing records anymore or what, what would my, be? My advice is always to be a product of your imagination, not your environment. You know what I'm saying? I like that. As your, as be a product of your imagination, not your environment. As your imagination becomes intellectual property, that intellectual property can thus become real estate as in the literal ground underneath your feet. You know what I'm saying? Live there. You know what I'm saying? You always been this smart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you threw me off. I was like, this is the same nigga knocking niggas out of here. Come on, 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 come the, the, the saying is Atlanta, I, and I wear a shirt all the time that says Atlanta influences everything, mm -hmm. and that that just didn't start. I, I I tell people all the time that that goes back from the civil rights movement, Dr. King. Atlanta has always been the, at the forefront of pushing pushing the culture forward, and you could just tell from I mean you you straight West Side Atlanta like you've been saying this whole show, so you could tell in your spirit and your energy that you know you saw a lot, you came up with some just real genuine. People and genuine shit. Like no you doubt. Can see it in you know way here, doing come, your music, personally everything. On the way here, we coming through the AU. I'm like, boy, I just remember just Washington Park, man. The first Freak Nicks was over yeah. there, and I'm like, man, oh, we used to get some weed from over there. So we come out now. You know, so we come out and get the, with the get the five dollar. We used to call it sets back then. Sets, boy. Sense. You know we old, boy. That's they say sets. That's we old. That's real old. Well, we used old. Used to say that I thought too. Sets. Yeah. That was back now. They yeah. got, yeah. got <laughs> strands and all this other shit. I don't even deal with all that yeah, wild this shit, shit man. <sighs> but man, hey man, I just want to say appreciate you. We getting ready to get up out of here, man. Appreciate you coming. Yeah, this is all right, man. Yes. Thank y'all. Really oh, man, my yeah. nigga, all way, all way. Yeah, for sure. Boy, yes. you, we, yes. we, we this, he called me the OG. He the OG. Uh, of course, before we get out of here, I got to dedicate this episode to two people. Uh, Mr. Shakir Stewart, yes. uh, my friend, my family, and also to my father, Mr. Thomas Clark. May he rest in peace. 
This is Legendary Jerry. With this Jamie is Jamie Page. Page. This is the one hit of <laughs> <laughs> The one hit of quitter, Mr. CeeLo Green, CeeLo Goody. You know, like I, tell, I never tell y'all them stories. You haven't told you. I ain't telling yeah, y'all nothing about Yeah, them. we ain't said nothing about them stories. Real quick, though, tell them your um, handle Instagram, on Instagram, Twitter. Social media. Thank you. My, my wife always asked me to just... Because I'm just, I don't, I don't, I'm, sorry. I'm from the Old Testament, man. I'll be forgetting, man. <laughs> man, follow That's me it. at CeeLo Green and Twitter. And is that actually you or is it her handling your account? My <laughs> <laughs> Is everything C at CeeLo Green? Yeah, right. Everything. Yeah, pretty much. Am I right? And make sure you all go on YouTube to subscribe to Legendary Jerry yes, Podcast. Um, subscribe, leave some comments what y'all think about this. This is my brother right here. Game and we are signing off. Oh, my brother, CeeLo Green. We out. Legendary Jerry. <laughs>